The Worcester Railers playing game four of their ECHL playoff series tonight with the Adirondack Thunder. The Railers coming into tonight's game in Glens Falls, New York, trailing in the series two games to one. And the news tonight, not much better. The Railers falling by a score of two to one. Eamon McAdam got the start in net again tonight after Mitch Gillum got the start early in this series. McAdam made 26 saves. Barry Almeida had a power play goal for Worcester, but it was not enough. The Thunder take a three games to one edge on Worcester heading into Saturday night's game, which could be a decider for the Railers. That game also in Glens Falls, New York. Baseball closer to home. Cam O'Neill and Holy Cross hosting Army West Point tonight. Hanover Insurance Park, bottom six. 4-0 Army. Crusaders' Chris Rinaldi with a base hit. Kellen McCormick scores, and it's 4-1. O'Neill with the bases loaded now. Cam lifting a fly ball to center. It's deep enough to play Jared Enders, and it's 4-2. Army's Carter Van Geitenbeek on in relief. Gets a critical strikeout to end the threat. Former Assumption head coach Jamie Pinzino is the pitching coach for Army West Point. Danny Barlock in for relief. Looked good in the seventh with a strikeout, but the Crusaders would fall 6-3. to three. Now Barlock having a strong year, posting one of the lowest ERAs in the nation. His head coach, Greg Desenzo, says he's among a group that the Purple will count on down the stretch. We've had a lot of guys that are you know, middle inning bullpen type guys or midweek bullpen arms that have contributed significantly uh, on the weekends for us. And that includes, you know, Patty McGowan, Declan Cronin, and as you mentioned, Danny Barlock. They've, all three of those guys have been absolute horses for us. And uh, those are guys that were, you know, were fighting for innings just a year ago. And now uh, they're getting the ball in every big opportunity, in every big spot that we have. So, uh, you know, our success in the next three or four weeks here will solely depend upon their ability to continue that trend of, of competing, working hard, and, and leaving us winning strike and distance at the end. Classic, An important up. weekend series for Holy Cross at Lafayette coming up on Saturday. To the Aztec Invitational Championship, Asimut taking on North. The Aztecs are the defending champs in their own tournament. Scoreless in the bottom of the first. Runners in scoring position, Tyler Dossis, the base hit. Tyler Boucher scores, 1-0 Aztecs. Bases loaded for Isaac Wagner. Chopper to short. Doing a job, Connor Sherlin comes on to score, 2-0, Asabit. North, Sam Quinones with the strikeout for the Polar Bears. Aztecs load the bases again, up 4-0 this time. Quinones with a K to end the inning. Top second, Aztecs. Jamie LeClaire with the strikeout, looking sharp. Bottom second, here's Wagner. Base hit to center, Connor Sherling. Rounding third, heading home. Wagner was three for three on the day. Aztecs up five to nothing. North playing a little defense. Chris Cotto going to spin a 6-4-3 double play with Chris, Brian DeJesus. Not enough, though. Aztecs of Aztecs win nine nothing. Pitchers combined on a no-hitter, and Hunter Stone named the tournament MVP. Lester hosting Quabbin in softball this afternoon on a muddy field at Lester High. Bottom second, we're tied at one. Kaya Burt's crushing one. This is a blast to center. Three run home run for the freshman. The Wolverines take a four to one lead. There she is coming to the plate a couple times. Hannah Dufries drilling. Another shot. This was hard line drive drops in. Hannah Gallant's gonna score. It is five to one. Lester. Quabbins, Alicia Swan battling back from the circle. Gets the strikeout to end the inning. And in the second, her battery mate, Emily Wood. Good piece of hitting by the Quabbin catcher. Leading things off, trying to get a threat going. But Burt's bearing down, gets a couple of strikeouts to end the inning. To the third we go, Caitlin McKay with a missile to left. Lydia Pettit's going to come around and score. Six to one, Lester. Wolverines get the win. 11-9, your final. Grafton taking on Holy Name. This is a high school softball summit meeting. A couple power programs here. Holy Name actually the home team at Grafton and Ava Vince Aquari dealing with a strikeout on the top of the second. The Naps led one to nothing. Grafton's Jess Evans, the ace, bringing it as well. The strikeout here ends the bottom half of the inning. To the third we go and Sarah Remillard just unloads. This is majestic. Maybe the deepest shot many of us have seen at Grafton High. 
Two run home run. Evans scores in front of her. It's two to one. Indians. Bottom third. Becca Goodney for holy name. Opposite field power. It's a solo shot tying things at two. What a game this morning. Top of the fourth. Grafton's Jess Hamilton. Rocket of a grounder. This one gets all the way into the gap. Kayla Kara Abdi coming on to score. It's 3 2. Then the pitch gets away. Hamilton wound up on third, so she's going to score. Made it 4 to 2. More than enough for Evans, who was her usual solid self. Grafton wins 4 2. Your final. To lacrosse now. And wow, what a gorgeous day in Northboro. Aren't they always gorgeous? I know. Fran Witten thinks so. 2 0 first half. Algonquin's Chloe Chiota feeding Sydney Guidi for the goal. Sid the Kid scores. 3 0 T Hawks. Algonquin then. Caroline Riley coming around the crease. Gets a shot. Gets the goal. 4 0 T Hawks. Chloe Chiota again on the ISO. She ripples. It's 5 0. North Middlesex with some pressure. Hannah Nolan streaking in. Her shot stopped by Aaron Blake. Blake's been good for a while now in the net. Algonquin's Kate Sullivan going top shelf for a goal. Six to nothing, T-Hawks. Then Algonquin feeding Julianne Sacco like Hull used to feed Anna Botari. For the goal, it's eight to nothing. North Middlesex, Molly O'Neill with a great bid. And Blake with another stop thanks to her defense as well. O'Neill, eight meter, saved by Blake. Algonquin gets the win, 18-4. Big, big day of uh, high school and college sports, but the Railers fall today. They've got a must-win game on Saturday night, or those of us who are growing beards for the playoffs are going to have to shave for work on Monday. Uh -oh. Don't want to do that. I don't, I don't know. know. I don't we know gotta, if I want to We got to take that. a poll. I mean, everybody shout out. If you like Andy Lacombe's beard and you want it to stay, let us know. Yeah. It's, yeah. We'd like to know. Yeah, mom, you can't vote because mom, mom doesn't like the beard. So uh -oh. we'll hope for the Railers, and we hope this beard lasts a little longer. Yeah. <laughs> All right, well, that's going to do it for us here on Worcester News tonight. For Andy Lacombe, I'm Anna Botari. We'll see you back here tomorrow.